Shalom. Greetings. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. The website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. Today we are resuming our study in the ancient book of Jubilees, a book found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, actually many manuscripts found in the Dead Sea Scrolls of this book. It was one of the larger finds of the Dead Sea Scrolls as far as manuscript manuscripts were concerned. Um, and so we are now approaching, we're ready for chapter 36, which deals with the death of Isaac and the death of Leah and Isaac's last words to his sons, where he once again tells them to love one another, you know. But, and you know, he even have Esau agreeing to this. Uh, but come chapter 37, we begin to see this climax of this war that's about to take place between Jacob and Esau. Um, and you'll see that the antagonists, the provokers of this war, were actually the sons of Esau. Uh, so pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, so we won't get to the actual battle or anything today, uh, but we will get to the build-up to that. Uh, so that's what we're looking at in the ancient book of Jubilees this morning. Let's start with a scripture, the scripture of the day today from the Bible app. Here's what it says. It's Psalm 68, verse 5. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. Psalms, book of Psalms, gotta love that book, Psalm 68, verse 5. Alright, I just want to jump right in this morning, so uh, let's delay no further. Chapter 36, the book, the ancient book of Jubilees. Let's begin, verse 1. And in the sixth year of this week, Isaac called his two sons, Esau and Jacob. And they came to him and said unto them, My sons, I am going the way of my fathers to the eternal house where my fathers are. Wherefore, bury me near Abraham my father in the double cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, where Abraham purchased a sepulcher to bury in. In the sepulcher which I digged for myself, there bury me. And this I command you, my sons, that you practice righteousness and uprightness on the earth, so that the Lord may bring upon you all that the Lord said he would do to Abraham and to do and to his seed. And love one another, my sons, your fa your brothers, as a man who loveth his own soul, and let each seek in what he may benefit his brother and act together on the earth. And let them love each other as their own souls. And concerning the question of idols, I command and admonish you to reject them and to hate them and to love them not. For they are full of deception. For those that worship them are for those that bow down to them. Remember ye, my sons, the Lord God of Abraham your father, and how I too worshipped him and served him in righteousness and in joy that he might multiply you and increase your seed as the stars of heaven in multitude and establish you on the earth as the plant of righteousness which will not be rooted out unto all generations forever. And now I shall make you swear a great oath for there is no oath which is greater than it by the name glorious and honored and great and splendid and wonderful and mighty which created the heavens and the earth and all things together that ye will fear him and worship him. And that each will love his brother with affection and righteousness, and that neither will desire evil against his brother from henceforth forever all the days of your life, so that ye may prosper in all your deeds and not be destroyed. And if either of you devises evil against his brother, Know that from henceforth every one that deviseth evil against his brother will fall into his hand, and will be rooted out of the land of the living, and his seed will be destroyed from under heaven. But on the day of turbulence, 
and execration and indignation and anger with flaming devour fire as he burnt Sodom, so likewise will he burn his land and his city and all that is his, and he will be blotted out of the book of the discipline of the children of men and not be recorded in the book of life. But in that which is appointed to destruction, he will depart into, her, into eternal excretion, so that their condemnation may be always renewed in hate, and in excretion, and in wrath, and in torment, and in indignation, and in plagues, and disease forever. I say and testify to you, my sons, according to the judgment which will come upon the man who wishes to, to injure his brother. And he divided all his possessions between the two on that day. And he gave the larger portion to him that was the firstborn, and the tower, and all that was about it, and all that Abraham possessed at the well of the oath. And he said, This larger portion shall I give to the firstborn. And Esau said, I have sold to Jacob, and given my birthright to Jacob. To him let it be given. And I have not a single word to say regarding it, for it is his. And Isaac said, May a blessing rest upon you, my sons, and upon your seed this day, for ye have given me rest, and my heart is not pained, pain, is not pained concerning the birthright, lest thou shouldest work wickedness on account of it. May the Most High God bless the man that worketh righteousness, him and his seed forever. And he ended commanding them, and blessing them, and they ate and they drank together before him, and he rejoiced because there was one mind between them, and they went forth from him and rested that day and slept. And Isaac slept on his bed that day rejoicing, and he slept the eternal sleep, and died one hundred and eighty years old. He completed twenty-five weeks and five years, and his two sons Esau and Jacob buried him. And Esau went to the land of Edom, to the mountains of Seir, and dwelt there. And Jacob dwelt in the mountains of Hebron, in the tower of the land of the sojourning of his father Abraham, and he worshipped the Lord with all his heart. And according to the visible commands, according to, as he had divided the days of his generations. And Leah, his wife, died in the fourth year, in the second week of the fourth jubilee. And he buried her in the double cave near Rebekah, his mother to the left of the grave of Sarah, his father's mother. And all her sons and his sons came to mourn over Leah, his wife, with him, to comfort him regarding her, for he was lamenting for her, for he loved her exceedingly after Rachel, her sister, died, for she was perfect and upright in all her ways and honored Jacob. And all the days that she lived with him did not hear from her mouth a harsh word, for she was gentle and peaceable and upright and honorable. And he remembered all her deeds which she had done during her life. And he lamented her exceedingly, for he loved her with all his heart and with all his soul. All right, before we move forward, let's just kind of recap what's taking place. Isaac is, was about to die, so he called his two sons, and he starts to really talk to them about, and several times he mentions the importance of walking in righteousness on the earth so that God would bless them. And he, and he reiterates that several times. God bless the man that worketh righteousness, and then in, in his seed forever. He just keeps pushing that work in righteousness. And the other thing he keeps pushing is the importance of loving your brother and not devising evil. He even goes as far as to say that the person who devises evil and tries to destroy his brother his judgment will be the same judgment that Sodom got. And so he's really pushing that forward. And then it's time to divide the goods. And of course, the large portion goes to the firstborn. But as we remember, Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of lentils. Um, and we actually see Esau acknowledging this. He's, and Esau said, I have sold to Jacob and given up my birthright to Jacob. To him let it be given, and I have not a single word to say regarding it, for it is his. So you almost see that Esau is coming around, that he's kind of forgiven Jacob about all this. And 
seems to be doing what his father asks. And then shortly after Jacob buries his father, he has to bury his, his wife. And so he's already buried Rachel, and now he's going to bury um, Leah. And uh, it says, you know, while Leah was not his first choice for his wife, right? And, it, and he loved Rachel exceedingly, and we all know the story. And Leah was, uh, the scriptures talk about, you know, Jubilee specifically talks about how Leah had a nice form, but she wasn't very. She wasn't as beautiful um, as Rachel. However, Leah was the one that was blessed, and her womb was open, and she birthed most of Jacob's sons. But it says that Jacob came to really, really be in love with her, because she never spoke a harsh word to him. She was always peaceable. It says, always upright, always honorable, and so it really has a lot of good to say about her. It says he remembered all the deeds which he had done during her life, and he lamented her exceedingly, for he loved her with all his heart and with all his soul. All right, let's move forward and go ahead and read chapter 37 here, where Esau and his sons wage war with Jacob. Let's see how just let's see how Esau goes from admitting that it all belongs to Jacob to suddenly he's at his doorstep with thousands of men. Chapter 37, verse 1. And on the day that Isaac, the father of Jacob, and Esau died, the sons of Esau heard that Isaac had given the portion of the elder to his younger son Jacob, and they were very angry. And they strove with their father, saying, Why hath the father given Jacob the portion of the elder and passed over thee, although thou art the elder and Jacob the younger? And he said unto them, Because I sold my birthright to Jacob for a small mess of lentils. And on the day that my father sent me to hunt and catch and bring him something that he should eat and bless me, he came with guile and brought my father food and drink, and my father blessed him and put me under his hand. And now our father hath caused us to swear, me and him, that we shall not mutually devise evil, either against his brother and that we shall continue in love and in peace, each with his brother, and not make our ways corrupt. And they said unto him, We shall not hearken unto thee, and to make peace with him, for our strength is greater than his strength, and we are more powerful than he. We shall go against him, and slay him, and destroy him and his sons, and if thou wilt not go with us, we shall hurt, we shall do hurt to thee also. All right, so let's note something. You know, one thing I've noticed about the world is that when is that wicked people typically bring up a generation even more wicked than themselves. Have you ever noticed that? You'll have some. You'll have a. You'll have some. You'll have a couple who they, they walk in wickedness, uh, but they're tolerable, and then they have kids, and their kids become even more wicked than their parents and it just seems like it's a it's a you know it's like the righteous typically you know raise up righteous people and the wicked continue to raise up even more wicked and what we have is I mean all we have to do is look at the generation that runs the world now one of the most wicked generations that ever exist in my opinion um, at least since the time of, times of Noah um, and what we have here with Esau as Esau lived a wicked life, and now his sons, it says, the sons of Esau, his descendants could be, it doesn't necessarily mean they were all directly his sons, they could have been sons of sons and grandsons and things like that. Uh, but they've come to him and they they, they, they want to know why he's they're not being blessed, and Esau explains, because I sold my birthright to Jacob for a mess of lentils. And they said, well, we're not going to hearken to what your father Isaac says, we're going to do this thing. We're going to attack him. We're stronger than we are. And if you won't go along with it, Esau, we're going to attack you too. So this is how evil and wicked these, these sons are. Let's continue. Verse 6. And now hearken unto us, and let us send Aram and Philistia and Moab and Ammon, and let us choose for ourselves men who are ardent for battle, and let us go against him who do battle. 
to do battle with him and let us exterminate him from the earth before he groweth strong. And the father said unto him, Do not go and do not make war with him, lest you fall before him. So you see, Esau, Esau's remembering the, the prophecy that Isaac had said. If you attack your brother, you're going to fall into his hands. And Esau's pleading with his sons, Look, you do this, you're, he, you're not going to win. It's not going to bode well for you. Uh, let me read it again. Their father said unto them, Do not go and do not make war with him, lest you fall before him. Verse 8. And they said unto him, This too is exactly thy mode of action from thy youth until this day. And thou art putting thy neck under his yoke. We shall not hearken to these words. And they sent to Iram and to Erdaram, to the friend of their father. And they hired along with them one thousand fighting men, chosen men of war. And there came to them from Moab and from the children of Ammon, those who were hired one thousand chosen men. And from Philistia, Philistia, one thousand chosen men of war. And from Edom and from the Horites, one thousand chosen fighting men. And from Kittim, mighty men of war. And they said unto their father, Go forth with them and lead them, else we shall slay thee. So, so they hire thousands of men, right? About a thousand men from each of these locations. Um, I didn't count it up. It looked like four or five thousand people. And then they come to Esau and they say, Look, you're going to lead these men into battle against your brother. We're going to kill you. I mean, these are some wicked sons, aren't they? Verse 12. And he was filled with, in verse 12, talking about Esau. And he was filled with wrath and indignation on seeing that his sons were forcing him to go before them to lead them against Jacob, his brother. But afterward, he remembered all the evil which lay hidden in his heart against Jacob, his brother. And he remembered not the oath which he had sworn to his father, to his mother. And he would devise no evil all his days against Jacob, his brother. So his sons kind of force him into this situation, but then after things get moving, that hatred that he had still lying in his heart came forth, and he kind of forgot about his promise to his mom and to his dad about not, and his oath that he made about not attacking Jacob. Verse 14, And notwithstanding all his sons, Jacob knew not what they were coming against, knew not that they were coming against him to battle. And he was mourning for Leah, his wife, until they approached very near to the tower with four thousand warriors and chosen men of war. And the men of Hebron sent to him, saying, Behold, thy brother hath come against thee to fight thee with four thousand girt with the sword. And they carry shields and weapons, for they loved Jacob more than Esau. So they told him, for Jacob was a more liberal and merciful man than Esau. But Jacob would not believe until they came very near to the tower. And he closed the gates of the tower, and he stood on the battlements, and he spake to his brother Esau and said, Noble is the comfort wherewith thou hast come to comfort me for my wife who hath died. Is this the oath that thou didst swear to thy father, and again to thy mother before they died? Thou hast broken the oath. And on the moment thou didst swear to thy father, was thou condemned. And then Esau answered and said unto him, Neither the children of men nor the beasts of the earth have any oath of righteousness, which is in swearing they have sworn an oath valid forever. But every day they devise evil one against another, and how each may slay his adversary and foe. And thou dost hate me and my children forever, and there is no observing the tie of brotherhood with thee. Hear these words which I declare unto thee. If the boar can change its skin and make its bristles as soft as wool, or if it can cause horns to sprout forth on its head like the horns of a stag or a sheep, then I shall observe the tie of brotherhood with thee. And if the beasts separated themselves from their mother, for thou hast not been a brother to me. And if the wolves makes peace with the lambs, so as not to devour or to do them violence, and if their hearts are towards them for good, then there will be peace in my heart towards thee. And if the lion become the friend of the ox, and maketh peace with him, and if he is bound under one yoke with him, and plowing with him, then I shall make peace with thee. And when the raven becometh white as, a, as the raza, 
then know that I have loved thee, and I shall make peace with thee. Thou shalt be rooted out, and thy son shall be rooted out, and there shall be no peace for thee. So Esau is basically saying, look, this is just the nature. This is just the nature of how things are in the world. Everything and everyone is looking to devour its foe. You want me to make peace with you? That's the same as like a lion trying to make peace with a lamb. It's just not possible. Verse 24. And when Jacob saw that he was so evilly disposed towards him with his heart and with all his soul to slay him, and that he had come springing like the wild boar which cometh upon the spear that pierceth it and killeth it, and recoileth not from it. Then he spake to his own and to his servants that they should attack him with all his companions. And that's where we're going to be stopping today, folks. I hate to stop at such a climatic point, but we are out of time. So Jacob realizes that there's just no getting out of this. He's got no choice. Esau has come to make war. And so he commands his servants. All right. Esau has come here with 4,000 men. He's clearly... We can't reason with him. We can't uh, make peace with him. It's time to attack. And next week we'll continue and see how this plays out. This is an interesting story that we don't get from the book of Genesis, huh? Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta admit one problem with reading these books... With these historical narratives like Jubilees and Jasher, is when you're constantly reading all these and you're constantly studying the book of Genesis, they kind of blur together. And so, usually, what I have to do after I've studied a book like the book of Jubilees is I need to go back through Genesis and just get the foundation of what the uh, canonized scriptures have to say, uh, just so I don't confuse the bunch. And maybe that's something you might consider doing too. The Book of Jubilees is important. Found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. I think it was meant for us to find. It meant for us to read. And it's meant for this generation to know and to understand these things. Uh, but we still have to be careful not to blur the lines. Um, especially if you're a Bible teacher like myself. Uh, because you don't want to be teaching something call it from the Bible, but it's actually from Jubilees or from Jasher or from Enoch. So you got to be able to keep those things separated. The thing with the Word of God is, is that it's, you constantly have to be studying it. You can't, it's not like it's a novel that you've read three or four times, right? It's a constant form of study uh, that requires a lifetime. And uh, sometimes I just feel like, you know, the, that life prevents me from being able to study the scriptures as much as I want. I want to read them. I want to study the Hebrew language, the biblical Hebrew language. I want to study these commentaries. I want to study these extra biblical books. There's just, there's just so much. But, but life and work and family and all these other things make it hard to make that happen. Um, but I continue to try to get up early, early in the morning before work, study the scriptures, and to share it with all of you. And I just... I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that this work has been a blessing to you. I pray that on that day I hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Um, my biggest fear is to hear, depart from me, I never knew you. Right? <laughs> like the, to, the scariest verse in all the Bible, uh, in my opinion. I pray that I hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So I hope that it's blessing all of you. Uh, you can support this work by going to scriptureandprophecy.com. It's definitely not required. Uh, this work here, this podcast here, is 100% listener-supported, um, free to all. Uh, we don't hide anything behind paywalls here. Uh, but if you want to support it, you can go to scriptureandprophecy.com. Um, there's several ways to support uh, PayPal. There's Patreon, becoming a monthly Patreon subscriber, which is huge. Um, and so I really appreciate all of you who do that. Uh, and then there is the good old fashioned snail mail and the PO boxes up there at the website. All right. I hope you all have a blessed weekend and Lord willing, I'll be back with you next week, uh, to resume our scripture study. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless. <laughs>